So in this video I'm going to describe what a matrix is. A matrix is a way you can represent a linear transformation as a certain uh, table of numbers. Okay. So to show you this I'm going to take the completely general case. So I'm going to suppose I've got a linear transformation A going from some vector space B into some vector space W and I'll assume that these have general dimension. So V has dimension equal to N, W has dimension equal to M. So N and M are some integers. Okay, telling you the dimension of the spaces. So therefore we can find a basis for each which will allow us to write down the vectors as column vectors. So I'm going to suppose that V has a basis I1, I2, up to In. We must have N basis vectors because that's the dimension of the space, right? And similarly, W has a basis. I'll call these Js. J1, J2, up to Jn. Okay, so if I draw a little picture of that, then I've got the two spaces here, V and W, and in V I've got some bases, I1, I2, and in W I've got some other bases, J1, J2. Right, so I'll draw two dimensions because that's easy to draw, but I'm considering the general case where there are N basis vectors of V and M basis vectors of W. Okay. In the case where the, the n is equal to m, you can take the same basis for both. But you're not forced to. Okay, right, so what a basis means is that I've got some vector v in v, in the vector space v, then it enables me to write down that vector in terms of its components in the basis. So, in other words, for vector v in v, I can write this as a column vector, some components v1, v2, up to vn. And what this means is v1 times the basis vector i1, plus v2 times the basis vector i2, up to vn times the basis vector in. And now we can consider what is the linear transformation of this vector, what is AV. Okay, so just from here, this is A of V1 I1 plus V2 I2 plus Vn In. And the first property of a linear transformation says that you can take the sum outside the transformation. So you can do the transformation first and then do the sum. So that will give you A V1 I1 plus a v2 i2 all the way up to a v n i n. Okay, so here you do the sum first, but because it's linear, you can do the sum second after the transformation. And the second property of a linear transformation says that here, if I've got a number like v1, v2, vn, these are just numbers, I can also take these outside the transformation too. So I can write this as v1 times a of I1 plus V2 times A of I2 plus Vn times A of In. Okay. So this equation is important because it tells you that you can describe completely the transformation A just by describing what it does to each of the basis vectors. So if I know what these N vectors are, these are all going to be certain vectors in W. Then I can tell you what A does to any vector just by using the components like this and adding up. Okay. So to describe the transformation A is enough to describe AI1, AI2, up to AIN. Okay. Now because we know that these are vectors in W, and we know that W has this basis, we can write each of these transformed basis vectors in terms of the new basis. So for example, we can write A of I1 
is some number, which I'll call A11 times J1, plus some other number, which I'll call A21 times J2, and all the way up to last number is AM1 times JM. Okay. Yeah, there were M basis vectors, so I need M numbers like this. Okay. So for, for some numbers. A11, A21, AM1. Okay, and you can do this for each of them. So similarly, we can write AI2 is A12, J1 plus A22, J2 plus, plus AM2, JM, and you can go all the way down to AIN, which is the last of them here. It's going to be A1N, J1 plus A2N, J2, and all the way up to AMN, JM. Okay. Now, if I take these equations here and I put them into this sum here, then we see that A of V is equal to V1 times A of I1, but that is A11J1 plus A21J2 plus, plus AM1JM plus V2 times the same thing, so I don't want to have to write it all that, so I'll just write the last one. So the last one is this one, Vn times A of In, so that's A1n J1 plus A2n J2 plus, plus AMn Jm. Okay, so we can simplify this, well not simplify it, we can write it in a neater form just using the summation note, notation. So here you see that the first number of the A sums up with the J's and the second number of the A sums up with the V's. In other words, this is V1, so this is the second number is 1, 1, 1. And here J1 is the first number is 1, J2 the second number is 2, and so on. So this is the sum of, I'll use Greek letters for the sum, so sum alpha equals 1 up to M, that's going to be the first number here. Sum beta equals 1 up to n, that's going to be the second number here. Of v beta times a alpha beta times j alpha. Okay, so that's written it all down in terms of components. So what does this mean as a column vector then? So the column vector is, the first component is just the thing multiplying J1. So the thing multiplying J1 is alpha equals 1. So you get the sum beta of A1 beta B beta. That's the first component. The next component is alpha equals 2, so that gives you the sum beta A2 beta B beta. And you go all the way down to the sum beta A N beta, uh, M beta, sorry, B beta. Okay. You can see that there are M terms in this sum. So this therefore is a vector in W. Right, so what does this tell us? It tells us that we can completely describe the transformation A in terms of what it does to the basis vectors, and we can completely describe that in terms of these small A's here. Okay. So for any linear transformation capital A, I must be able to find these small A's such that I can write the transformation in this way. So therefore the linear transformation is completely defined by these small a's, which are all numbers. Okay, and how many small a's are there? There's m of these, 
for each basis vector, and there are n basis vectors in total, so the number of a's is m times n. Okay. And this is what defines the matrix. So now I'll define the matrix and show you how it's useful. So, so we define the matrix of A as all of these numbers. So you usually put them in a table like this A11, A12. Dot, 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 all the way up to a one n, then a two one, a two two, dot, 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 all the way up to a two n, and it's going down here. This goes down to a m one. This goes down to a m two. This one goes all the way down to a m n. So this way and all that. Way. Okay. So you put all of these numbers in a table like this. This is called a matrix. Okay. So this needs, as I said, m times n numbers. Okay, and this is called a uh, M by N matrix. Okay, so if I go back to the sheet we had before, we worked out a formula for the transformation A in terms of these numbers small a given like this. So if the original vector is b1, b2 up to bn, then the final vector is given by expressions like this. So what does this mean in terms of the matrix? If I write then what is AV, so this is this matrix here, A11, A12, N, Okay, there's that matrix, and then the vector v is v1, v2, vn. So this is equal to, so just taking the result from the previous page, this is sum upon beta a1 beta v beta. That's the first term. It goes all the way down to, okay, I'll do the next one too, sum upon beta a2 beta v beta. It goes all the way down to sum up on beta a m beta v beta. Okay, so what is this sum? This is hold the first number here one a constant. So that means you're looking at the first row of this matrix here, right? Here, these are all the numbers which have one at the beginning, right? One at the beginning here. Okay, and then you multiply by the numbers in B. So A11, B1, that's this times this. Then A12, B2, that's this times this. And then all the way down to here. So in other words, it's the same as the way you calculate the scalar product of two vectors. You take the scalar product of this row here with the vector V here. But this times this plus this times this all the way down. Okay, and that gives you the first number here. Okay. And similarly, the second one is the same, but with twos. Let me do a different color. The second one is the same with its twos here, right? So in order to get this sum, I need to take the second row of the matrix A. And again, I do this times this plus this times this times that. Okay, and all the way down. So then the final one is the sum with M's here. So that's the final row of this matrix A. And again, like a scalar product with the vector v, this times this plus this times this, all the way to that. And that gives you the final row there. Okay, so just in case that's not completely clear, I'll just do an example. Here's a matrix 2, 3, 1, 
four, six, five. Okay, and here's a vector one minus one, two. Okay, so here you can see that the number here is m, which is the same as the number of rows in the matrix. So here there are two rows in the matrix. So I'm going to have two numbers here. Okay, and the first number is going to be this one. Okay, so that's two times one plus three times minus one plus one times two. So that's two minus three plus two is one. And the next one is this row times these numbers here. So that's four times one plus six times minus one plus two times five. So that's four minus six plus ten which I believe is 8. Okay, so you can see that this has got me a vector in V, which is obviously three-dimensional, and in this way I get a vector in W, which is two-dimensional. Okay, and we've proved that this therefore defines some linear transformation of these vectors. Okay. A final example I'll do is the same one I did in the previous video. We saw the linear transformation which was a rotation of 90 degrees clockwise looked like this okay so we proved this was a linear transformation how can I find the matrix of A so you need to see what it does to the A of I1 and what it does to A of I2 so this is a of 1, 0, right? i1 is 1, 0, vector notation. So this is 0, minus 1, and a of i2 is a of 0, 1, which gives me 1, 0, okay? So the matrix of a is as follows. If you look here, in the calculation I did previously, what you see is that the numbers here, A11, A21, up to AM1, which tell you how does the first basis vector transform, they form the first column of the matrix A. Right? These numbers here, A11, A21, AM1, are the numbers here. Right? And Again, similarly, this, the one which tells you how the second basis vector transforms forms the second column of the matrix A. And the ones which tell you how the last basis vector transforms form the last column of the matrix A. So one way you can think about this a matrix is the first column tells you what happens to the first basis vector. The second column tells you what happens to the second basis vector and so on. Okay. So in this case, the first column of A should be what happens to the first basis vector, which is this. So the first column of A should be 0, minus 1. The second column of A should be what happens to the second basis vector, which is this. So the second column of A is 1, 0. Okay. Okay. And if you're not convinced that's true, you can easily check. 0, minus 1, 1, 0, times V1, V2, in the way I've shown here. So to get the first one, you do that. So that's 0 times V1, plus 1 times V2, which is V2. And the next one is this. So that's minus 1 times V1, plus 0 times V2, which is minus V1, Okay, which is right. OK, so this is how you define a matrix of a linear transformation and how you can work out what the matrix should be. So in the next video I'm going to show you how you can combine matrices together.